Well, hello there. It's so great to see you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk. Welcome you up here to Weir Yard. And today I'm going to share with you five great tips to secure your outbuilding that you might be using for your little miniature model empire. And it's one of those things that I guess it's easy to get wrapped up with the fun stuff, with modeling, with creating the layout of your dreams, that maybe you don't put as much thought as perhaps you should into securing that from people who might want to just help themselves and steal your stuff. And those who have watched this channel for uh, well over 10 years now might remember that once upon a time I had my model layout in a shed and I got really excited, built it all up and unfortunately we got broken into and they stole a, an awful lot of my stuff. Luckily we were able to get much of that back but they also vandalized the layout. So I'm sharing with you some of the subsequent tips and advice that I put Put into practice that made sure that the shed was never uh, broken into again. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts with the full range available to buy today at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Call them now for the very best price. Check them out today at the link below. So come with me for my five top tips to secure your model rail outbuilding. First of all, it's probably not the sexiest of topics, and I know a lot of people come here to watch trains going by, watch reviews, and watch modeling ideas, but nonetheless, these are really important. If you keep your model world out there in an outbuilding or a garage, anything like that, and I just wanna share with you these really important tips to keep it super secure. Now, you're never gonna make anywhere completely impregnable, but the most important thing, I guess, is that you're making it look much harder to break into than somebody else's shed. You want to make it difficult uh, because that's probably the best deterrent at all uh, that there is to stop people from breaking in and stealing your stuff. And some of these tips really do apply equally to whatever you keep in your shed, be it gardening equipment, maybe there's a motorbike or a mountain bike out there, and certainly these will help to keep it secure. So first up, we're going to take a look at the door to your shed. And of course, if you buy a ready-made shed, it tends to be a little bit flimsy. So what I did was I completely upgraded my door. I got some pretty substantial tongue and groove board. And this means that uh, when the little crims try and pull your door off, and that's what they did with Weir Yard, you can't easily separate these boards from each other. And that's a really great starting point. I also secured it with not one, not two, but three bolts. And I did have a padlock on all three of these. And the reason for this is if you just put the one padlock in the middle, you've still got a lot of leverage that somebody can put onto the top or bottom of the door to try and force entry. And three securing points really does go a long way to protect that. Now, the next really important area which a lot of people forget about is the hinges and I've got three substantial hinges here but just remember if all you do is screw them in then the crim could actually just unscrew these and it's not unheard of to uh, have sheds broken into by them just unscrewing the hinges and opening the door that way. So I do recommend the use of things like coach bolts, which have rounded dome heads uh, with the actual nut secured on the inside of the shed. And these are just impossible to undo from outside. 
or failing that uh, you can always fill in the heads of the screws and you can buy some ready mixed fiberglass which is sold as like a repair paste by chandlers for boats uh, you know for boat repairs also car bodywork uh, makes good use of this stuff as well and if you fill in those heads and people just simply can't get a screwdriver in to unscrew them the final area on the door that you can do is also maybe use a sheet of plywood screwed to the internal structure and this provides a second layer of defense and you can also just stuff in between with some loft type insulation just to help improve the environment within your shed just to make it uh, uh, cooler in summer and warmer in winter just a little bit of a tip there for you. Now the next area that uh, can be a weak spot to any shed or outbuilding is the window and quite apart from being able to just smash the glass a lot of sheds actually have some quite cheap windows uh, even just using some quite flexible acrylic that you could force out. And this is where firstly make sure it's nicely secured in place but also if you can just put some bars across the window. Now on my shed I put two metal bars secured to the outside and I did fill in the heads of the screws like I said before with a little bit of fiberglass just to make it impossible for them to be easily unscrewed. The idea is to make the gaps in between the bars just too small for a person to be able to get through so even if they smash the window they still can't gain entry to the inside and talking about the inside what I've done is I've got a Venetian blind and this serves two purposes firstly it stops people from looking in and seeing what there is inside because if you make the contents of your shed an unknown quantity then it means that anybody who's looking to break in doesn't know for certain there's anything that's going to be worth the effort and that is actually quite important and quite apart from that just keeping the sun out is great to stop fading of your scenery. On the inside I also put another metal bar and this was uh, another way of just securing that space in the middle between the two other bars but I did it from the inside and it also meant that it was much harder for if you've got something like an acrylic based window in a shed for that to be pushed out and pushed into the shed it just helps secure everything uh, together. The next weak spot that I want to talk about on your shed is the walls and these are very often overlooked and it doesn't matter just how secure your door or your window is if the criminal can just pull the siding off and climb through the resulting hole and remember that criminals aren't going to be careful about what they do they will smash their way in smash and grab and cause a great deal of damage in the process so I've got two methods employed to help protect the sides of my shed the first one was incorporated along with weather resistance. I actually used roofing felt over the ends to protect them from prevailing wind conditions that might otherwise force moisture in. Uh, but before I did that I screwed a sheet of thin plywood over the top of all of that clapboard siding and that meant that it's just impossible to pull it all off and the roofing felt nailed in over the top of that just helps protect it all from any water ingress so it's quite a neat way of incorporating protection without actually having any knobbly bits sticking on the outside of your shed. The other area on the front that I protected was using some vertical uprights and I got some quite substantial timber and then I coach bolted them through and you remember I talked about the coach bolts being great for security because all they present to the outside is a domed head it's just impossible to get any kind of a grip on them to turn them to unscrew them. By having these pieces of wood vertical it secures all of the clapboarding in place and what you're trying to do is narrow considerably the gaps in between where that siding could be ripped off and you're making those gaps too small for anybody to realistically be able to climb through and I did use some uh, diagonal pieces as well just to make sure that everything was secured. On the inside of the shed this is another area where you can combine security with comfort. 
Within the structure of the shed itself, I actually filled in with loft insulation and then I put thin plywood screwed to the internal structure over the top. Now this gives, again, warmth in winter, coolness in summer, but it also is a second layer of defence that makes it really hard to get inside the shed if you're determined to smash your way through the walls. And that makes these walls really, really secure. The fourth area that I'm going to talk about in this video is the roof. And again, this is something that I guess a lot of people can very easily overlook. The roofs of sheds that uh, you buy in the UK can actually be quite flimsy in terms of how they're secured to the rest of the structure. And it's not unheard of that people actually just force the roof up. Yeah, that's right. Just grab hold of it underneath the eaves and push upwards. And with a bit of a rending noise, it's probably quite easy to lift the roof off the average shed and climb in. And that's going to cause a tremendous amount of damage, not least because it's going to let the weather in too and destroy anything that you've worked so hard to create inside. So what I've looked to do is quite easily make some A-frames. And you can see here that what I did is just simply make an A-frame using two long pieces of timber with cutouts to take the structure of the roof and then brace them with some diagonals at the top. And this is all bolted from the outside into it through the roof so that the roof pieces themselves, which are kind of just a piece of chipboard, just cannot be lifted off. The A-frames are then in turn bolted to the structure of the shed. Now this means that you've got a much stronger roof as well and you can actually walk on the roof of this shed because it will hold the weight of a person without really flexing and without running any risk of collapsing. And it, what it means is, essentially, nobody can pull the roof off the shed to get inside. And it's just a really great secure way of doing it. And you can fill in with, again, some solid insulation and make your little uh, empire a little bit more bearable in the heat of summer and the cold of winter. My final tip for you today, number five, is to add an alarm. Now, the most effective of these are ones which are on a separate zone to your house alarm and all connected into that one big system. And these are great because it will trigger your entire house alarm if your shed should get broken into. And you can set these up zoned so that you can turn the alarm on for the shed or for your garage or any other outbuilding, but not have it turned on for the rest of the house. So during the day, say, when you're just moving around in your house, you can have your outbuilding fully alarmed without it running the risk of triggering everything else as you go about your business in the rest of the house. And it gives you an immediate warning if something wrong is happening. Now, if you can't, for whatever reason, have a, a combined alarm system, then it's certainly also a good thing to do to have some kind of a local alarm that goes off, that makes a loud noise, maybe even flashing lights inside. And the reason for this is not actually as much to alert you, but because if you have something that uh, goes off in the face of a criminal, making a loud noise, loud flashy lights, you're actually most likely to scare them off. Now you can get alarmed padlocks, uh, which are used for motorbikes, uh, where you put one of these padlocks through the rear wheel, and if it gets moved and rocked about, then it starts to squeal and make a racket. And that's a good way that you can secure, say, the door of your shed. One of those padlocks, you can make it an alarmed one. And uh, it, that noise is really more to scare people away, should they start prowling around and just casing the joint. But those are my top five tips and uh, I hope that these are useful to you. So take them away, apply what you can to help protect your miniature empire and certainly let's make our layouts secure because the worst thing in the world is to have your personal space violated by a complete stranger 
who wants nothing more than to steal your belongings and take them from you. Uh, believe me, when I got burgled, it really was horrible. And the shed never felt the same for me again, so don't let it happen to you. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And if you've got any other top tips to help uh, protect outbuildings from uh, those people who might want to come and break in and steal stuff, please, please, please leave them in the comments section down below. Share those hints and tips and words of advice with other modelers. And certainly if the unfortunate ever happened to you and you, know, you learned from that experience, share those words of wisdom here as well it's something hopefully we can make this a great resource to help people protect their stuff please tickle that like button share this video as well to social media and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so you can also find all of our channel merch in the shop down below and uh, we've got a great range of uh, hoodies t-shirts mugs and otherwise and uh, they make great presents for yourself and for other people. You can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. And for as little as $1 a month, uh, with a multiple of different tiers of rewards, there's something there for everyone. But until next time, you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling, keep those outhouses secure. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, Makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections, no collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange, any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshaw Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.